So, D in the Thousand Moon is a musical indie game. It's, it's a musical. Everything is told via song. A very short game. It's sort of... It's more an experimental project than anything else. Um, but I think this... This game right here will change the paradigm of indie games. Uh, it's very basic, it's very short, but the fact that someone went on and did a musical, I think there is definitely a space for musical narratives in indie games, and in games in general. Um, it's unique, the music is good, and it does need a lot of refining, but I highly, I, I, I do support trying new things, weird things, just like shotgun at a wall, see what fits. And this is one of those like, you know, out there, it's really not in the norm and I really appreciate it. So. Ye of the Thousand Moons is a modern retake on a different story, which I will tell you guys later, but let's focus on the game. New game. Let me know if you can't hear the music, because this is the most important part. Darkness everywhere, darkness, darkness Moon, Chapter 1, Moon Drops. Darkness is expanding across the world, and the gods plan to combat it by harvesting moonlight. They want me to help them by shooting the moons down, but the villagers have warned me that the moons are what protect the earth from stardust. I don't see any other way out of this darkness though. I'm gonna shoot down the moons. What's up? Upper slack. If this doesn't have butts, I'll be very disappointed. Ooh, I think it do have the butt. Everything has the booty. Everyone had the booty. Where do we begin? Do we begin? I hope we're trying to save each other. Gods have ordered me to shoot down the moons For reasons that they can't quite cover oh. You got the booty You got the nice slender booty This is, this is, a, this is a game set in China Don't, don't expect the big booty but she got the booty. If you can hear it, it's very subtle, but every time you jump, there's a small musical note. So the name of the game is Ye and the Thousand Moons. Which we will get to. As far as I know, this was made and coded by one person, but it has a musical orchestra built around it. So, this, like, I like the difference between the, the higher definition out there in space versus what's down here on Earth. So, there's no mouse reticule or anything, you just sort of look at it vaguely and shoot.
darkness, and that's stardust. And you're literally shooting down the moon. Seventh one? Where's the last one? Where are you hiding? Oh, there he is. Now we're at the end, we're at the end. All the moons are gone, but I wonder. Orange Act 2, Orange or Song 2, Orange Grey Skies. Stardust has poured into the atmosphere, engulfing the planet in a suffocating spectral haze. The villagers were right. I need to talk to them about it. Next song. I feel like musical games, like a musical for a game. If you have the resources, you can make it really good. Instead of, you know, pages and pages of exposition or finding something uh, or finding out the back lore by reading like text and text, if you just hear it lyrically or musically, like, I feel that can evoke a different kind of emotion or or a stronger emotion than you know reading about it in a book but that's that's just because i, I like listening to it. and it's a lot faster than carrying through pages and pages of lore like this is this song is purely about the villagers reactions to like hey you just shot down the moon that was protecting us from this orange toxic dust what the hell? together all the musical talent? That's gotta be hard, man. out of nowhere. That's not the jankiest part. Come on, you gonna do it? Are you gonna do it? Come on, you gotta do it. Don't, don't, don't boo-boo like this. Come on. Ah, oh, they're, uh, they're not gonna do it until I leave. Okay, fine. Fine, you're, you're a little bit stage, stage shy. A bit of stage fright. Cool. You gonna do it? this out. The portal at the very end tracks my mouse. So wherever my mouse is looking is where the very end of the portal is, which is a really cool effect by the way. I appreciate that a lot. 
Uh, oh, now they're now they're gonna do it. Oh, look at that! Oh, that's so oh, that's so bootleg. Oh, that's so janky. I don't know why they're doing that. They're so that's, that's so janky. <laughs> I don't know why they're they're practicing martial arts. Like, I don't know, the world's ending, and you're like, yes, we're gonna punch it. Okay. I'm who am I to judge? Alright. Now we're in the home of the gods. Chapter three, Poster Child. This is the first. This is my first time in the Highlands, where it looks like the Stardust hasn't hit it yet. It's definitely still dark though. I'm here to meet with the gods, who I hope can convince to restore the moons and protect us all from the Stardust. In order to summon the gods, or at least get their attention, there are the three of them up there, the three different colors: blue, green, and red. But we have to ring the bells three times. This guy right here, green shot. Boom. Set that up, throw that up as my wallpaper. So they, basically the gods were like, we're not going to help you. <laughs> Screw you. Bye. Oh, that's not helpful at all. So you said that you want a new home. Have to try building a vessel of stone. Interlude. The gods refuse to restore the moons, even though it's only a matter of time before the stardust reaches the highlands too. But I have a new plan and I'm determined to get the villagers on board. And this is basically the second half of the story. It's a very short game. Just drink up, you're in the right hands. There's another way, maybe an escape. We'll shoot further than the highlands In another day, just another day Craft our vessel of stone We'll be on a new home 
Yeah, but we're not gonna help you, Archer Lady. Cause, cause you, you the one that started all this. Ant of the Crafts People. Good news, everyone! The villagers think the plan is as solid as a rock. Bad news is that, between the darkness and the stardust, it's getting more and more difficult to breathe the air here. I'll head to the mountain to collect the stones, which we can then use to craft a vessel. Yeah, you, you crazy. A new home! The villagers have finished building a vessel from the stone that I collected. Now the time's come now now's the time for all of us to board the ship and get out of here before it's too late. We built a vessel and stuck it on top of an active volcano. And the idea is that the volcano is gonna launch us into space. <sighs> Good. You basically take control of each individual villager and you run them up the mountain. I feel like that dude's got the only food and he's carried nothing but leeks and onions. Everyone's gonna be real gassy. But oh well, maybe they have like really strong intestines. Guys, I hope the hope the land value doesn't tank. The volcano launches us into space on a weird ship. And that's basically the game. Goodbye, orange gray skies. Gonna leave it all. 
it's super trippy. It all, stars and suns and moons before our eyes. Gonna see it all. Gonna see it all. And this is where the thousand moons part comes in, because you basically jump off into space. And that's the end of the game. Cast. He, Dominic Starr, Layla Smith as Villager Ching, Magnus Ferguson as Wen, Reed, Reed Jenkins as Z, Wesley Kwok, uh, developed by David Sue. It is uh, five dollars, I think, on Steam. Let me let me double check. But that will be it for the stream right now. Do I tab out. I have to tab out. It is currently five dollars on Steam. I, I would like to support it because I want to see where this gets taken. Here it is. He and the Thousand Moons. So it's based off of an actual Chinese legend. It's the legend of how we only have one sun in the sky. There is an archer, and the archer does shoot at the sky. Um, the legend goes... At the dawn of time, there was not one sun, there were ten. And each of the ten suns had a personality. And for each day, one of them would ride across the sky. You know, Apollo, Helios, chariot style. Then one day, one of the suns decided, Hey, how about all ten of us ride across the sky at the same time? And so they did. All ten suns rose in the sky at the exact same time, the exact same day. Uh, they pretty much set fire to the earth, and everything was burning and, and, and a, dying in a fire. Um, so the gods above basically hired a mercenary archer, and they said, Okay, dude. We can't have these ten suns burning everything that every everyone that worships us. So we need you to shoot down all but one of them. And he does. He murders nine out of the ten suns. And that is why we only have one sun in the sky. According to an old Chinese legend, anyway. But I want to support this game. I really like the direction it's going. Um The musical the music was written and and developed by David Sue. Uh, I, I want more of this stuff. Yeah, I mean... A lot of old mythology is very human. You know, you got, you got your trolls, and you got your dicks, and you, and you got your law and order types, and you just throw them all in a... throw them all in a mix and see what comes out. But, yeah, I, I want to see more games that sort of break the norms, like, um, I love first-person shooters, Hearthstone, even though Hearthstone drives up my blood pressure, I still love it, but musicals as games, games that make you think, games that make you feel, um, the, the art side of games, like that, that has a place too, and I want to see Stuff like this. Oh, flourish! Hearthstone is great. Drives up my blood pressure like nobody's business. But this music, 